that live thing going? Yeah, we're good. Because you can start the broadcast whenever you want. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to keep the phones on in case anyone texts us. Christian, turn your fucking phone off. The only two phones we need on here are mine and his. Actually, mine. You don't need yours on. Okay. No one's going to text you. I think we're ready. We got a couple minutes. I mean, we're ready. What time is it right now? It's 11.58. And we are live, people, straight from the SF Bay. We have a huge audience behind us, as you can hear. Right. First guy. Hey. hey. TM. Hey, Bram. We're 30 seconds into the first show, and it's already fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. Whatever. We're live. Yeah. Oh, we're live? Cool. Are you nervous? No, actually, I'm not. I, it's hard to be nervous if, like, three people are watching. Should we introduce the show? What are we doing right here? We don't know what we're doing. What we're actually doing is bringing people on to the show and just BSing, you know, shooting the shit, you know, about uh, days gone by, about the present, about whatever. It could be anything. It could be, you know, political topics. It could, it could be about skating. It could be anything. As the kids say, real talk. Mm -hmm. and, and just have a, have a round of conversation and not necessarily Q&A, not interview, you know, because that stuff gets stale. What size is your chicken sandwich? Where does your mom live? At South by Southwest, that's where everyone goes to play shows and these, they have showcases and stuff. Yeah. And you put it out that you were going to be out there, right? So my bass player was going to be out there and he, his buddy was a drummer. So I'm like, well, all else fails. You know, I can, they're, they're he, he could play. They're going to be there. You know, they paid their way. I'm like, cool. Well, if I can get a ticket out there and just figure out where I'm going to sleep, then, you know, I'm good. And then, so I put it out there to South by and a bunch of different people just using all social media and um, people started to respond. You know, what's funny is one of the small shows, a private show, was a cat who used to work here from Deluxe, Bart. Oh, really? Yeah, connected me with a guy, John. And that's how that show got together. That's how that show got together. Skaters, this Esteban and Neil, these two guys really made it happen. One guy works for a South By and another guy works for another company. And they worked it out where I got an official South By show within the short amount of time. Week so and a half, two it, weeks. What does an official South By show mean? What does that mean? You're, you're showcased, you're part, of, you're part of the event, they're gonna put it out there you know, um, um, on their media and they're gonna promote it in, as they do all the other bands. So you're right. part of it. So that means also you get this band and you can go see any, like any, any right, shows, right, anything. Show. Yeah, as, a, as an artist. Oh, shit. As an right. artist, which is cool. So you have access to shows and, and all these different uh, um, talks and, and platforms that are, they're having. And, and it's just, it's really cool. You're like, That's wow. Cool. So we got, a, we got an official show, which was really amazing in a short amount of time. And thanks to these guys who are old skaters. It was really is that cool. Your phone? Is that me? What the fuck? Oh, let's see. Oh, hold on a sec. Who is it? Let's see. It's Lance Mountain. The hey, Lance. Did I have no idea? Hey. You're live on our new show, BS with TG. You're the first cold call. And you cold call me. That was awesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> can I get my earpiece on so I can hear you? I'm going to go to the car. Okay, go, go to the car and put in your earpiece. Can you show me your skateboard right now? Look. Can you see it? So Lance Mountain just called in. How rad is that first show? <laughs> so I think I think Lance fell. I think Lance fell down, but he has his hat helmet. <laughs> Did that look right? Yeah. Did that look like a real fall? Yeah, that was good. That looked pretty good, dude. That looked good. You should be a stuntman. <laughs> hey, can you take a run holding your camera, self self filmy? Drop oh, in. I just got kicked out. What did you do, Lance? I talked on the phone at the park. You can't do that. <laughs> There you, go. you could say you were calling like your grandmother or something and you know you needed it was important now we're deciding where to eat i just got a question for you it says lance who are you skating with ray zimmerman and my friend walt um john lacero was supposed to come he did not again <laughs> 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 only reason i invited him over is because i was trying to get him to draw something for me that's why he knew look at his car what car are you driving is that the team van do you want to look through here yeah let's see <laughs> Let's take a look through your van. Wait, we're going to do some self-promoting first. This is the park. First, wait a second. Oh, okay. Well, let's see your latest shred. Oh, security. Security. Why is there security uh, at a skate park? It's easier to catch skaters there. <laughs> they're, all like, they're all like fenced in. They can't go anywhere. Ah, I got you. Hey, look what he's showing. What do you got? Oh, shit. It's uh, film. Wait. Film? What's on the film? Ruined? <laughs> <laughs> what are those, dude? My new, my new glasses we got coming out next month. Hold on. Lance, look who just called in. Frank, talk to each, can you see each other? No one ever does this on a live talk show right here. This is, right? this is pioneering. Hey, Frankie. Hey, what's up, Lance? You 
Back in outer space where I saw you last time? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe we should try this another time. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for calling in to uh, BS with TG for the cold call and uh, say goodbye to your fans. It sounds like you're cutting me off for Frank. Uh, no, I'm cutting you off and Frank. You're both cut. Did you guys notice it? your initials aren't in the title of the show? You're done. Okay, we gotta go. All right, dude. Okay. All right, we'll talk later. Later, Lance. Thanks. See you guys. Bye. Bye. All right. Let's pick up where we were. So South by Southwest last minute was amazing. The best show, I just have to say, was at No Comply Skate Shop in Austin. It was uh, Elias' skate shop, who I've known for quite some, some time, and who's a ripping skater. We had about 150 people there, I'd say. And so the energy, people were really into it. And you feed off that energy, man. They get excited, you're like, wow, let's go. Shop. Oh yeah, at the shop, it was insane. Yeah, how is it different playing in front of a group of people versus skateboarding in front of a big group of people? Is it similar? Or? Skateboarding hurts a lot more than- You fall less playing music than, than what playing. You're saying, right? Yes, yes, definitely. It's like being on display too. Yeah. I mean, you know, demos are like that, right? So. You're kind of there like, all right, we're going to judge you and criticize you. And you're like, oh, man, now we're going to have a word, a word from our sponsor. sponsor. And who is our sponsor today? Hold it there. I don't want him to do anything. <laughs> Hold it. Hold it. Lower. All right, now pull it away. Well, if I can't see you, you can't see me. So I'll just put my hands over up my eyes when he does that. Like, <laughs> and, oh, this, uh, this just in. I'm not here. Oh, this just in. Oh, break. Breaking news. Breaking news. One more viewer. Q and A. What do we got? Johan Alinius asked if I've ever recorded music with Gons. Yes, I have. We had an album out in Japan many years ago. It was a uh, more like poetry spoken word over beats that I had made. It's kind of goofy and funny. It came out in Japan on a private label, and it only exists in Japan unless you can find it on the interwebs. One of the tunes is in Real to Real, and uh, Mr. E Smith on Instagram says, "What happened to 40s? Will it ever be brought back?" 40s was a little clothing company that I did out, out of here, out of Deluxe. Everything was made in San Francisco. And uh, clothing's hard. It's not so rewarding. You do small numbers and everything comes back wrong. Like 50% of your garment, you're like, oh, I, that's wrong, this is wrong. The, you know, you put the buttons on the cuff and you put the, it's just all screwy, you know, but you, and you can't control it. If I did do some company type situation, it would have to all be made in the States. 40s video is probably on YouTube. That was a long time ago. And that was shot with Pixel Vision and Super 8 and maybe High 8 at the time. Do you know there's that footage of Julian doing the Switch wall ride? Yeah. He did one right before it that was so high and so clean. He landed, came off, and then he spit off the curb. And so we were like, well, should we use it? No, we shouldn't use it. But now it would have been rad to have it up there as well. Yeah. Because it was, I mean, it was, how long ago was that? 15 years ago at least? And that's how all the, the solo music crap happened because I did the whole soundtrack for it and then all that music, not all of it, but a large part of it ended up being on my very first record that was released on Galaxia with Thomas Campbell's label and, and Greg Lamson. That was never meant to be. I was never, I wasn't going to ever release any music because I was thinking, who, who would buy this? Who would, who would listen to this? It's just me doing my thing, you know, instrumental music especially. So that's how that happened. Because of the 40s video, the first record came to be. It's, it, it's kind of, yeah. You know how these things happen. Back to there. Favorite skaters from the new generation. Donovan Piscopo, the way he skates, you know. Omar Salazar, you know. I love their, their styles. The way people ride away from tricks or up to them is important. It's not even necessarily the trick anymore because it's so, the tricks are so gnarly and everyone's so good that it's really about how you skate. And there's cats who do a trick and they get off their board and walk away. And there's guys who do a trick, land it, and just keep going. Those guys who are the ones who have the fire, they just get juiced from it and they're like, I'm gonna go attack the next thing. Ishad is just beyond, because he's just beyond a skate rat. He's um, incredible to watch. It, it's kind of frightening sometimes. There's, there's so many I skaters out there, they're so good. I would hate to grow up skating in this era as far as you know, a professional skater. Throw yourself down like 26 stairs. Woo! James Kelch on Instagram. If you could go into the future or back in time, what would you choose and why? What would I choose and why? James, you're fucking with me. If I go into the future, oh man, I don't want to go into the future. Dude, Star Trek, just go watch some Star Trek. Henry Sanchez, just some of the stuff he was doing when we were filming videos was just mind boggling. I didn't do all kinds of techie craziness. You know, you had Hensley come along after us and he's the one who just like yeah. took it. And Saul, with all the Switch stuff, he was the first one to look natural, Switch. Mickey asked, tell a story about Jesse Martinez. 
if I tell a story about Jesse, I'm going to get beat up. Simple and plain. Were we together the one time when he was so pissed that he intentionally landed on his knees? He held oh, he on, held, like, he held method, method. All the way without yeah. getting out of it. All the way without getting so out of it. in the air straight to his knees, still holding his board. Because he, he was pissed. Because he was pissed. <laughs> no, Jesse, man. <sighs> Pure fire. Come on. I fucking love the mess. Super distribution in Canada. Should there be a retirement age in skateboarding? Should there be a retirement age in skateboarding? In like what sense? Like forced retirement as a professional? As a professional? No. I think, you know, it's upon the individual to realize where they're at. You know, it's like you're not really relevant anymore. I mean, whether it be competitively or otherwise. I mean, you know, we took a bow out. Like, right. you don't stop skateboarding. You know, you don't skate as much because you can't because you're physically fucking destroyed. Even then, you still think about it every single day. Everything you see, you don't perceive objects the same way ever again. Mystery sponsor break. Right? So, come on in. Come on Thanks, in. Chili. So we're going to see who the mystery sponsor is. Oh, look in, remember? Oh, oh, this is awesome. This is what they call a little handy. And little handy is a percussive instrument. Or when you land a trick and you're by yourself, <laughs> you clap. You get somebody to clap. You're like, <laughs> and I would like to thank little handy as one of our sponsors today. They also fly. <laughs> you have a new record out just really quick? Yeah, it's called No Man's Land. It's kind of thematic. It's kind of a spaghetti western style soundtrack to a film that doesn't exist. So you could go to Bandcamp. You can check out everything there and, and hopefully support. I'd appreciate it. Oh. Oh, this is the part of the show that we didn't tell you about. Oh, God. Well, I'm glad there's like six people watching. So let's see what this is. This is top secret. This is going to be, oh. <laughs> My God, I'm so sorry. Can you see that? That is so, I would say it's not executed well. I don't Are know. You flattered? No, I don't know if she probably got it for me, but it's probably just more of the design. Right. So V Court Johnson and Powell, they could be flattered maybe. Yeah, flaming sword, like what, Conan? Cool. All right. Let me try this one. This is where I get a sound off. I get, if I had a soapbox, I'd stand on it. I'm gonna start with this, cilantro. You know that little green shit that everybody's been putting on everything? So there's a study that happened and there's information that states that 10% of the population is genetically predisposed to disliking cilantro. It's a fact. You could look it up. To all you chefs and cooks out there, and I know some of you guys, do not fucking put cilantro on anything unless it says it on the menu. Yeah, you didn't state that it had cilantro. What? It's just part, I'm like, no, no, no. No, it's not. It tastes evil. If you're going to use it, make sure it says it in the ingredients. I went to a restaurant once and they put cilantro in lentil soup. Lentil soup? Culturally, you out there who know about lentil soup, if you ever seen cilantro in your soup, you'd probably like have a fucking conniption fit. Nate on the cilantro. That's my tirade for today. I think that really well. <laughs> I got a real quick one from Justified. Davis. Justified. I got a real quick one from Davis. Davis who? Davis Torgerson. Torgerson. Yep. That guy rips. The best mezcal you've ever had. Ooh. That was in Mexico City, dude. That was my first introduction to it. I don't know the name brand, but there is a good one, but I'm not going to plug it until they support and sponsor the show. They but I like it on the rocks. Uh, let me, let oh, me, show this is show, show and tell, right? Show and tell. Fucking... I'm kind of a junk collector. I'm not like Lance Mountain. This is a real video. VHS. Look at that. See that? I bet you there are a lot of people out there who don't even know what this is. Young kids. Not that they're watching this by any means. Don't get me wrong. This is the, the first real video where we stole some of the best music on the planet for parts. And I have a VHS copy. It's for sale. If, you know, if the price is right. Right. A long, long time ago in the 80s. This is before, you know, that brand that makes the little skateboards and stuff. This is a handmade little fingerboard. And this is from probably 86, 87. And I've had that for 20 years. No, 30 years. That's oh nice. my gosh. So these are the type of things that I hang on to. Like Lance hangs on to like Caballero's like dreadlock or something, you know. And then um, we'll do a quick 
you know, recap um, of some photos. This, you might have seen it before, but this is uh, from the cover photo of Thrasher in 1984. This is before the rails and everything at Fort Miley when I was just getting on Powell. I'm riding Powell freestyle wheels. But when Phil 5 would the top bar, I couldn't understand it because the bank is so steep, right? The rail is about six inches from the lip, maybe. So how do you vertically ollie that high up, directly straight up and land and then come in? I mean, it didn't make any sense because I always ollie and it goes, you know, like that. You have this you, you arc. You go this way, right? Yeah, yeah, where it has this arc and not, I've never, you know, I don't know. That was, that fucked my head up. It does not make any sense. It does not compute. Oh, this real quick, this is funny. Powell ad, right? Look how they spelled performance. See, we weren't the only ones. Real wasn't the only one with all this typos. Performance. I'm a performer. That's pretty good. Big and black bold text. So this is just a book that I have full of photos and crap. And I'll be doing a show and tell every, probably every episode. I have enough crap, some cool stuff and interesting stuff that ties into history and skateboarding. So anyway, I mean, we could wrap up the show. Um, next time it'll be more concise and more together and everything. And this is still a test. This isn't uh, the actual episode one. Just like trying a skateboard trick, right? Over and over and over and over until you make it, until you're like, okay, I'm comfortable with this. Thank you to all four of you for watching. Thanks to these guys for helping. Appreciate it. We're good. Oh, you didn't even see my finish. That was sweet. Yeah.